it's easy to think of cloud computing in the same way we think of electricity. Someone else goes through the trouble of producing electricity. It's available on demand. And it's elastic, so it scales up to meet whatever increasing needs you put on it. Pricing is another story though. Electricity charges you in standard units, and cloud doesn't. Let's say you ask for a double room at a hotel. Every room will be different from hotel to hotel. The size of the room, the facilities available, etc. This is the same model in IIS. A virtual machine is given to you as how the provider sees fit. For example, Amazon Web Services small virtual machine contains 1.7 gigs of memory, one compute unit and 160 gigs of local storage. As a consumer, you can't change that, although there are some exceptions to the rule. Big enough hotels and with good enough credit, you can stay as long as you want. It's a pay-as-you-go model. You pay per night. If you're not checked out by 12, then you pay for another night. IAS providers also do pay-as-you-go pricing. Once you start a VM, it can be used as long as required. But the unit of time varies. Amazon charges an hour as its minimal period. Cloud Sigma, only five minutes. So if you use a VM for one hour and 43 minutes, Amazon will charge you two hours. Whereas Cloud Sigma will charge you one hour and 45 minutes. Other incidental charges can include having to tip the doorman every time you come in and out of the hotel. This is probably a small charge, but it's very hard to budget for it because you really can't tell how many times you enter and leave. In IAS, this is typically the data transfer or bandwidth charge. If you take out a six or 12 month subscription, you can normally get an advanced discount. Prepaid pricing works out cheaper than on-demand billing. Alternatively, you can buy into a loyalty scheme, pay more upfront and receive a greater discount. That's the basis of Amazon's reserve instance model. Hotels offer spot market for guests who only want a room for a short period of time. Amazon Web Services offers a similar spot market. Consumers place a maximum bid on a VM, and if this is above the current spot price, they get access to the resource. The downside is they can be kicked off at any time, but since Amazon Web Services determines when to terminate, customers aren't charged for any whole hours. Hotels have these things that they don't publish, such as size of rooms vary on different floors or noisy neighbors. This problem is endemic in cloud computing. There are many metrics a cloud provider cannot guarantee. They could have performance issues, security problems, traffic bottlenecks, or maybe they just have a high rate of disk failure. Subjective issues too. They might use a hypervisor A, whereas you may believe hypervisor B is far superior. So how do you decide which cloud provider is the best for you? We used to compare hotels by room specifications until grading systems became commonplace. But now internet hotel brokers are everywhere, promising to find the best deals. Do we subject IAS providers to such independent assessments? Maybe a star rating based on quality performance availability. And will we find the emergence of cloud brokers promising to find you the best deal?